congratulations on signing up for the fall small groups for Fierce Teens. We're gonna review a few things that are going to make this small group rock your world. Are you ready? These small groups are intentionally all about discipleship. What's discipleship? Discipleship is what Jesus did when he was doing his ministry a long time ago. For three and a half years, he invested in 12 guys. He did life with them. He talked about God's word with them. He talked about how to apply that to your everyday life. These small groups are not lasting three and a half years, but they are lasting about three months. And in that time, your leaders want to disciple you like Jesus did. They want to live life with you. Now, yes, it's only meeting once a week, but they want to get real with you. They want to talk about life and then apply that life to what God's word has to say. Your small group leaders want to be some of your biggest fans. And in order for that to happen, we need you to commit to the following covenant, which might sound a little crazy, but catch me. We're asking you to think about, here's what the fall could look like if you showed up, if you were all in. So let's talk about what it looks like to be all in this fall. The first one is we need you to commit to community. Commit to community means we need you to commit to showing up each week. Hey, I really feel like God really honors those that follow through with what they say. Um, there's a verse, I didn't look this up, I'm, I didn't actually say I was gonna write this, say this, but there's a verse that talks about how let your yes be yes and your no be no. God's gonna honor us as we continue to follow through with what we're gonna say. And if you want to make the most of this group, we need you to follow through with showing up each night of small group. Now I know that things come up, like maybe you have a family trip and it's like, I'm not gonna even be in the state. We get that. And communicate with your small group leaders in advance for that happens. And we know like people get sick and there's, there's COVID, like there's things that are gonna come up, but we want to ask of you to do your best to plan ahead, to get your homework done, to, sh to make the most of showing up, not only for small group, but also church on the weekend. We got, we got online church, we got church at the big building, we got house churches. There's lots of ways for you to plug in, to commit to community, because part of taking your next steps towards Jesus means that you're taking time with other believers in Jesus and going into God's word and being reminded, hey, this is what it looks like to keep going after Jesus and care about people. It's really hard to care about people if you're not making time to spend with them. We need you to commit to unity. And that means looking for ways to be kind, to look for ways to, to speak encouraging words to people, to look for ways to speak highly of people when they are around and when they're not, AKA no gossip, y'all. <laughs> We're looking for ways to pray for one another, pray for the needs of one another, and to be the love of Jesus to our small group. We need you to commit to taking your next steps towards Jesus, because as long as you and I are on planet Earth, there are more steps for us to take. You know what I'm saying? There's more steps for us to take because God's solution for the craziness in this world is for us to shine the love we have for our Savior, our King, and that's gonna reflect in how we love each other. And we wanna make sure we keep it all about Jesus because if we get a little sidetracked, like let's say we're taking steps towards Jesus, Jesus up here, we're taking steps, we're taking steps, but then we're like, I don't need to read the Bible, I don't need to pray, I don't need to like spend time with other Christians. All of a sudden, you might be thinking you're going towards Jesus, but you're, you're off in line of Mars, you know what I'm saying? We gotta keep keeping the goal of Jesus and continuing to go towards Jesus. Let's look for ways to take steps together. Lastly, I want you to commit to praying for one person. Now you can pray for the whole world. God bless you, you should do that. I mean, if that's what, what you wanna do, but I'm asking you to take time to pray for one person that doesn't know the love of Jesus. Daily pray that God softens our heart to the truth that Jesus is who they are searching for. Jesus is the only one that can fulfill the needs in their life. To, to pray for opportunities for you to share that love with them and to pray for opportunities for you to help them know they belong and to be their friend. Let's pray for one together. And parents, parents of teens, hey, we know that what you do is so important. We're huge fans of you. Being fans of teens means we are fans of you. And we know that in order for them to come to group, they need your help with transportation and maybe even talking through what we're talking about in group. And so we want you to know we're here to support you. Your small group leaders for your students want to be connected with you and um, and support you in any way. If you need help with transportation, feel free to let me know, let your small group leaders know. Like, God's got solutions to this. You are not in this alone. So we encourage you to commit to helping your kids 
show up each week, your teens, they're not kids anymore, <laughs> um, to show up each week. And if you feel a little like, I can't do it all, reach out to us. You're not in this alone. We want to help. I want to end with this scripture in Hebrews where it says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we spur one another, another on towards the love and good deeds, not giving up on meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other and all the more as you see the day approaching. We're in this together, y'all. I love y'all. Can't wait to see what God does this fall.